he's become a very confident sort of outspoken leader and a positive guy on that team um, that continues to believe and continues to to put out the right message in these playoffs and has helped keep the spirits within that Bruins dressing room high and the confidence high because the goalie believes in himself and believes in them and, and is going to give them a chance in every single game with the way that he's playing. And I think that gives a little extra oomph and confidence to a team when they know their goalie is just playing that good. Every year. You're always going to have a chance when you have a goalie playing that good. Welcome to another edition of the Pucks with Hags podcast, powered by Prize Picks, the, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. I believe this is the 90th episode of the Pucks with Hags podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Joe Haggerty. You can find my work at joehaggerty.substack.com. Uh, subscribe to a premium membership. You get all of my NHL and Bruins writing sent straight directly to your inbox via the newsletter on Substack. Uh, you can also find my work at Boston Sports Journal. Go to bostonsportsjournal.com, filing every day during the playoffs. With me today, I have my longtime friend and colleague, Mick Collagio. Mick, tell everybody where they can find your work, my friend. Uh, okay. Uh, Sundays, uh, bostonhockeynow.com. I do a column. Um, I'm in uh, periodical issues of the hockey news when I do those special editions on the Bruins end of it. And I got a little blog of my own called Rink Rap, which I link to on X and sometimes on Facebook. That's right. Check all of that stuff out there. Great stuff. And he is a frequent guest on the Pucks with Hags podcast. Let's not forget that. Absolutely. He is. And I also go on the Pete Shepard show regularly. Oh, there you go. Pete the yeah. Meat. Hope he's doing Pete great down in Florida. That's um, right. Prize Picks, uh, let's go with our sponsors and thank them for a little bit too. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Uh, it's really fun and simple. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to, up to $100. Let's also thank Game Time. Uh, Game Time is a great place uh, to get NBA tickets. Uh, any kind of tickets, really, but NBA playoff tickets right now. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, uh, all kinds of stuff. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Uh, download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but again, create the account. Super easy, easy to use and redeem the code uh, CLNS for 20 bucks off. Uh, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. That's game time. All right. Um, Mick, two to one Bruins win in game five. Uh, do or die elimination situation for the Bruins. They go down to Florida. And for my money, this was the best game of the series for them. Uh, you know, game one was obviously a good win. But like, I think game one is very much an outlier in this series because the Panthers hadn't played in a week. I think they were rusty and not themselves in that game. I think the Bruins took advantage. But the combination of the Bruins riding the momentum from game seven and Florida just not being Florida in that game, I almost throw that out a little bit. Um, I, I thought throw the next, game two as well. Yeah. Because the Bruins hit the wall. They did. They did. They but really, I thought really Florida ran out. They had nothing. No, I, I think that's true to a degree for sure. But like, I also think it was a different story with Florida playing the way that they did against the no, Bruins. Definitely. And, and and the next three games basically played out that same way, where they yeah. couldn't get shots on net, they couldn't get through the forecheck of the of Florida Panthers. Like those three games seemed like the real deal to me, even though I think you're right. I think they did hit a fatigue while the Bruins in game two. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. for sure. To but, me, the games in Boston are the ones that really spoke to me. Yeah, I I extended to all three, but I I will give you the extenuating circumstances in game two for the Bruins for sure. Uh, but like, I think game five, like them coming out and out shooting the Panthers 12 to four in the first period, them really having a great start and seizing control early in that game, uh, the way Charlie McAvoy played, um, you know, the, the, the way that they, they, they still kept with it, even in the second and third period where Florida really came at them a lot harder. Uh, I think they were able to withstand a lot of that pressure and, and make it a little more even as far as possession went in the other team's zone and, you know, getting second and third chances, some of the things they were doing, playing low to high, simple hockey, like the things they were talking about, uh, they did. And they got almost 30 shots on net where they couldn't even break 20 in the previous three games. So uh, I left game five feeling like the Bruins were playing their best hockey of the series. Uh, they certainly played with the desperation in an elimination game. 
And maybe they got Florida uh, thinking about them a little bit, you know, as they go back to Boston for game six. They're, they're obviously ultra confident in what they can do and, and kind of cocky, the Florida Panthers. But uh, I think game five was a good enough showing for the Bruins that it's going to give the Panthers a little pause. I think the Panthers' end of this is going to be that it's hard to match the desperation after the good work they did in winning three games in a row with best efforts, quote unquote, that they came home and did what many teams have done, yep. including the Bruins, went up 3 1 and didn't have, we couldn't manufacture what it took to match the desperation of an opponent that's good enough that they're going to put forth something that, hey, and Swayman had to stop Reinhardt in the final Correct. seconds. That's how close this game was. I was just so, going to say, Mick, like, like you're right, but like Florida had many great chances towards the end of that game, and they were really coming in the third. Well, they're period. capable of pushing. It just was yes. too little too late against a great goaltender. Yep. So playing lights out. So, and you know what, too? It wasn't, I, I, I'm glad I did not hear many people say, oh, they solved Swayman. You don't solve a great goal, goalie. You may beat the hell out of the team that's in front of them and get opportunities that are not realistic for that goalie to stop and yep. break through and score some goals. But solving Swayman never happened. I, how many times the Bruins scored goals on a guy early in a series and then couldn't get anything in the final three games? Yep. You know, so I, I don't. So I never thought Swayman was always fatigued. We got to go back to Allmark. No. This kid, this kid is, is he's right there. He's he's always been right there, and uh, and he relishes the moment. And you gotta love that as well when a goalie, which such a singular, unique position. Um, so really, uh, high marks to the Bruins for getting to the Florida end of the ice with the game, taking the game to their end, and uh, high marks for Swayman uh, to to keep on showing that he doesn't wilt. To to the to that point, Mick, like the he was the goalie, and the Bruins gave up six goals in back to back games in this series, and Swayman still leads all NHL goalies in the playoffs and save percentage, despite giving up a bunch of goals in both of those games. Like that's how good he's playing. That's how many shots he's faced. I, I do give the uh, Bruins credit, like you're saying, for sticking with him and not even wavering at all when like it it could have been an easy decision as soon as there was an opening there and they gave up a big number in a game. And I'm sure there was some pressure on them to like get all Mark in at some point. And they did get him in at some point because they yanked Swayman from one of those games. So he did get some game action, which was good for him, but like just given who he is uh, you know, what the tandem was like sort of sharing the goaltending duties and all the talk of that, I'm sure there was an, some pressure on them to think about all Mark and maybe putting him in. And I give them full credit for recognizing that Swayman was playing out of his mind continuously and keeping with him. And I think the, I think Swayman's attitude um, throughout this series and throughout these playoffs has made it easier too, because I think he's become a very confident sort of outspoken leader and a positive guy on that team um, that continues to believe and continues to, to put out the right message in these playoffs and is, helped keep the spirits within that Bruins dressing room high and the confidence high because the goalie believes in himself and believes in them and, and is going to give them a chance in every single game with the way that he's playing. And I think that gives a little extra oomph and confidence to a team when they know their goalie is just playing that good. Every You're, you're always going to have a chance when you have a goalie playing that good. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm resisting every corpuscle inside my body to, to uh, talk about the summer for Swayman and, offer sheets and everything else because of the way he's playing on a national continental stage and he's being watched by teams who have seen internal solutions begin to crack, crack you know, and, and uh, still, you know, we're coming back to mid season storylines, you know, as far as the goaltending goes and personnel and teams that are knocking on the door to cup contention and, and what would finish it off for them. And uh, right now uh, Swayman is, is uh, exuding, that kind of play that's going to uh, uh, just turn all the burners in this grill up to full, full out. And, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting off season where the concerns him and the Bruins. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, they're, they're going to match whatever offer sheet he gets, so, you know, they're going to have the cap space. They're going to have the wherewithal to do it and they have to do it. So like, I, there may be some drama as far as that goes, but I think they're going to match whatever he gets. I think he's going to get a lot of money now. Like 
there was some question going into these playoffs if you should pay him like a number one because he'd never really shown it. Like I think you have to now. Showing it now. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna he's gonna get that money. He's gonna get the term. Elmark is gonna get traded. Like all these things are gonna happen uh, in the off season based on what we've seen in these playoffs. I just don't see it ending any other way than that. Like even if he were to sign an offer sheet, like. They're going to match it. Well, you know, they the have. The thing is, he actually played the most regular season games he ever played in the season. Yep. In this year before Omar got here. Yep. So, so, so it isn't as though he's that shiny, that new a shiny toy. He's just, uh, he's, this has been a slow developing situation for a goalie of the year, um, you know, in college and, yeah. Uh, and who is, is but that's developing. okay with a goalie, right? You can develop them slow like that, and that's that's perfectly fine to do. I think that's the right way to do it. Well, yeah, some goalies, you know, break in early and and then never look back, Patrick Waugh. But you know, I mean, it's on well, some uh, break in and have a great start and flame out, like you know, Carter Hart and the other guys like that. They have these, you know, they come in with all these yeah. this reputation and they they get off to a decent start and then nothing happens because I think they just don't have the development you know, mentally and physically to, you know, really handle the NHL when push comes to shove. And I, Jim Carrey, the late yeah. great main locker, um, you know, there's a, little, a lot of uh, early, early achievements that are hard. To, you know, it's a little like the music industry. You know, yeah. You know, hard to keep doing it. That's why the slow bake development for a goalie, I think is the right way to do it. Cause especially with goalies, it's like, you know, there's a rush obviously with, with especially forwards uh, sometimes defensemen develop a little more slowly but with position players in hockey, there's a little bit more of a rush to develop them because like their peak level is, you know, comes so quickly, you know, and they, and they, and once they get over 30, you know, it starts to to go down with goalies, they can play well into their mid to late thirties. So like you can afford to be patient developing them. And Thomas is prime. He was 38. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, so it, it's okay to like take a few years and, and have the situation play out the way it did with, with Allmark and have him sort of work up to it. I think that was actually it for Swayman. It was the right thing to do. Why don't you go and get the Prize Picks app? Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America and the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Instead of battling thousands of other players that could be pros or sharks, you simply pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll right in. You can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's upcoming playoffs, during the Stanley Cup playoffs as well. As I mentioned, you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, uh, and, and anything else today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Um, it has something for every sports fan from basketball to hockey to League of Legends and everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. How cool is that? Um, you're going to want to get involved right now. Uh, David Pasternak, you can do goals, you can do shots, maybe you can do turnovers because sometimes he has a lot of those in the game as well. Um, you just pick more or less than. It's fun and pretty simple. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's download the Prize Picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. McAvoy, uh, a huge game last night, Mick. Um, game winning goal, obviously. Had three shots in the first period on net when he didn't have a single shot on net in the first four games in this series. Ended up with uh, six shots on net, four hits, three block shots in 23 plus minutes. Um, I thought was playing in control. Um, wasn't out of position too much. Wasn't trying to do too much, which I think he was at points during the the, the series. Was making sure he was getting shots close to the net. Even the, the goal that uh, Geeky scored uh, to open things up. That was an intentionally wide shot at the net from McAvoy at the point that uh, DeBrusque was able to get behind the net and then get it to Geeky in front. So I think there was obviously a renewed focus on going low to high, getting point shots through from from the high points and, and making sure they were creating that action around the net. And I think it was the right thing to do. It worked. And with McAvoy focusing on shooting the puck at the net and shooting it around the net, I think it makes him a much more effective player and something he wasn't doing in the first four games in the series, but he was a big difference maker last night. 
Yeah, and I think he had more veteran partnership last night. I think the Lowry partnership was de-emphasized. Um, Mason Lowry played just under nine minutes at even strength, and a lot of that was with Andrew Peake. The McAvoy was paired a lot with Hampus Lindholm, but yep. also with Parker Watherspoon. Yep. So, so there was definitely a changing up of the makeup of the player he was playing with. Um, and so uh, I think that they thought, hey, Lowry is like a bigger Grizz, you know, uh, so uh, he skates really great, you know, moves the puck really great. Let's let's put him with McAvoy. And, uh, and what we're seeing here is that that uh, McAvoy functioned a lot better, uh, more solidly, more stably with either Lindholm or with Watherspoon. Yeah, somebody that was a little more of a, a stay-at-home sort of component, or or yeah, you know, yeah, was a more yeah. defensive more of guy. More Don Ari to go with Bobby Orr. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Um, but I think in general, like they needed that kind of a game out of McAvoy. He was minus four in this series, no shots on net going into this game. People were starting to ask questions if he like he was hurt or something was bothering him physically, which I don't think was the case. I think he was just kind of struggling in this series, and and some of it was you know the partnership, some of it was. The way he was playing, I really think he was trying to do too much. He was go, getting way think, out of position at points. Uh, I think that's the nature of the. I think that's the nature of his partnership right now. Is I feel like that's why I wanted so much for them to try to get a Chikrin type player with him, yeah. somebody who would allow him to not feel like he has to be Scott Stevens and Scott Niedermeyer. Yeah, to be both. No, you can't. It's impossible. You can't be both. You know, you like be both. No. Uh, so. So, you know, it was really, it, it really allows McAvoy to, to settle down and, and do what you do well and let that grow and build out from a fundamental standpoint, rather than feeling like you got to be, you know, Ray Bork, you know, in 1992 with, you know, a very green Don Sweeney or Matt Hervé or somebody that they dredged up from the minors that to, to somehow... Who was that last one? Matt Hervé, H-E-R-V-E-Y, believe it or not. Uh, I don't so, even remember that guy. Well, the, the Bruins, when they went to NHL, was in the, they had to strike that year. Um, and and the Bork had played so much hockey in 88 and 90 runs to the final. And then 91, you go to the conference final. 92, you're going back to the conference final after a very difficult year that you actually got outscored in the regular season. And... Um, you know, but the late thing that they had back then was that post Olympic infusion of talent, which oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. was was uh, G- uh, Joey Juno from Canada and Steve Hines and Ted Donato from the U.S. Uh, simultaneously, Glenn Murray comes up from Junior, uh, Dave Reed, and it's like they're a whole different uh, team. You know, yep. I mean, Dave yep. Reed's obviously early, but Dave Reed had returned to the team that year, so yep. so they really were much had a much better secondary presence in the forward lines behind Oates and even though they didn't have Neely in that playoff uh, with the injury uh, but th- that was that that happens in the you know, but Ray Bork just it's like the more mileage that was on Ray Bork through the prime years of his career the more it was heaped on his shoulders and he went through some stra- strains in that 91-92 season where where it really kind of and really kind of you know it's the only time in his younger part of his career that I ever thought he looked lost you know, it's and it was very rare situations. But one time the Red Wings came into Boston and beat the crap out of the Bruins. They were Red Wings were just starting to get really good. And uh, and it wasn't the game with all the fights. I don't think it was one, another one where they just came in and just scored a million goals. And 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 Ray Bork, you could just tell he was frustrated out there trying to do too much and nothing. Yep. None of, everything was turning to crap. Everything he touched. And it's just, you know, this can happen to the greatest players in the history of the game. 100%. Charlie McAvoy. 100%. It happened to, I remember, Zidane Char's first year with the Bruins when the talent level wasn't that high. And maybe he felt the pressure of, you know, the captaincy and sort of coming to Boston and, you know, proving himself or whatever um, after coming over in free agency and signing a big contract. But that first year, Zidane Char, I thought, tried to do too much and was not as effective as a player. He's a big That's mind a great player. great example. Great example to bring up because look at the work Peter Shirelli did to try to find Big Z, the right defense partner. And it's kind of like trying to find your team the right coach. There's a million great coaches. The right one's tough. A million great goalies. The right one's really tricky. Yep. And and uh, for Z, 
it turned out that Shirelli went from, you know, we, we know what happened with Nick Boynton. Um, Jeff Gordon, you know, had a deal in place and got overruled and he went and yep. came. Paul Mara came. Uh, Paul Mara, you know, wound up going to New York for Aaron Ward, who wasn't getting along with Yager in the room. So yep. Aaron Ward comes and now that seems like it's going okay for a while. And yep. now Shirelli decides he needs to tweak that. He goes from, De from that to Derek Morris. Promises Derek Morris he's not going to trade him. He has to apologize later because he realizes this ain't working either. He yep. winds up with Dennis Seidenberg. And yep. Dennis Seidenberg becomes, even though he played a lot of regular season with, with Boychuk, you know, yes. which emerged from within. And, and that continued. Over. He would end up playing a lot with Boychuk during regular season. But That's it was correct. always like during the playoffs you would and see then, And then Seidenberg became his shutdown partner and Boychuk anchored the second pairing with Andrew Ferentz. Yep. So, so uh uh, that that was um, it took you know I mean you think of each guy's succession all the way through trying to get Z that right guy and Z, and sides wound up being that guy um, absolutely when they got over the top yep no and that makes all the difference when you find the right pairing that's working together and that's why honestly I've advocated and I'm glad that they put Lindholm and McAvoy together in the last few weeks of the season to get a look at it and to also view that as a very viable option in the playoffs because I do think Lindholm helps McAvoy out quite a bit when the two of them are playing together. And both of those guys are capable of playing a lot of minutes, um, you know, for, and they're in the prime of their careers. So you don't worry as much about sort of them wearing. Well, and they also want to answer the question, can, how is Carlo going to be without Lindholm? Right. And how will he do? And what we, what are we going to give him as a left defenseman? in that position and is it going to be a grinder like Watherspoon, who's just fundamentally sound you know welterweight who punches above his class or is it going to be are we going to try to do this um with grizz and right obviously um, give him the traditional grizzly krug guy. kind of guy that he's always had as his partner which seems to have worked pretty well and i honestly i think carlo needs somebody that is a little is adept at moving the puck especially against a team like florida that's going to throw heavy four check at you like they did okay um with weatherspoon uh yesterday uh last night um but i wonder you know well, i wonder if you're, if you're getting florida's Florida, if you're getting florida's best most suffocating four check yeah. how carlo and weatherspoon are going to fare together uh you know if you leave them together for long stretches of time it'll be interesting to see yeah but 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 you know the, the the good thing about Montgomery is he switches those guys around a lot and they're all used to playing with each other. So he that's makes, true. He that's makes a lot true. of in-game adjustments switching around the partners anyway if something's that's not right. working. Um, last night, uh, Brad Marchand made the trip. Um, he skated on. He skated, uh, I believe, in morning skate. Um, they had his jersey hanging uh, in the locker room during the game. They kept it hanging during the game. Uh, he spoke to the team during before the game. Definitely a presence down there um, and an, an inspirational one for sure. Um, do we think that we're going to see Brad Marchand play uh, in game six? What's your gut instinct? Obviously, we don't have any like, you know, I inside, don't, don't inside instincts here. I think maybe he'll be the banner captain. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> I'd love it. I think that'd be great. Because I think it would shock the crap out of the crowd and they go nuts. And well, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Has the there ever been an, everything they need? Has there ever been an active player that's been a banner captain in any situation like that? I don't, well, I don't think so. why not be first? <laughs> there's no, there's no, I don't think there's any rule saying they can't do it. No, and no, no. Not but gonna play, why the heck not? I mean, I, I just think it would be really great to, to, to pull out a stop like that that would really kind of, um, of course. If Marshan's well enough to withstand the noise that that's going to cost, right? That's going to cause. So sorry, and um, then I think it would be a great ploy because the fans need something special, um, you know, rather than just another franchise icon uh, in a in a routine that is very well oiled and works nicely and gets the crowd revved up. But some surprise that really kind of lights them on fire and gets them chanting in the first period before a Florida fan starts anything um before anything bad happens to the team just just you know being at uh, the crowd they need the crowd to be a six player friday night uh most definitely and i would expect they will be with the season on the line you know sometimes i've found like the last few years sometimes during the week like middle of the series games you do see the especially if it's not the first game of the series you do see the bruins fans get a little 
sort of not as uh, they lose a little energy. They lose a little steam. They're not quite as enthusiastic, but I find that the first game of the series that's at the garden and definitely when they get to like elimination situations towards the end, that's when you'll see the liveliest crowds anyway, but that would definitely add a lot to it. And you're right. That would spice it up. I, I just think, yeah. <laughs> I, I just think it's interesting. Like they're going to have two days off in between the games. He is now on the ice skating a bit. He's traveling with the team. He's definitely getting closer to a return. And this is the playoffs. I think well, I there's would... more days. There's more days here as we right. go forward. So, so I, I wouldn't so rule I it out. Rule it out, but I'm no. not optimistic based on him, you know, looking like he was doing Christmas uh, party skating. Yes, <laughs> yes, but right. they do. Everything they do. But the little toddlers around him. <laughs> <laughs> but they do have a couple of days, so we'll see. We'll see where he's at. Um, but I think it's certainly. Um, I wouldn't rule it out at this point, um, especially with it being an elimination game at home. Uh, and they could definitely use him, uh, but you're not going to obviously risk anything if, uh, you know, there's any lingering effects or if there's any question whatsoever. You just don't do it in those situations with a concussion. No, husband, uh, dad, number one. Um, the team's second. And if he's ready to go and the doctors say, yeah, we're 100% here, let's do this. Like it's no different an answer than you would have gotten two months later. If that's really the circumstance, then bring it on. You getting excited about the Boston Celtics? Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, the entire band of Celtics players uh, looking like they have what it takes. Even if Porzingis is uh, hurt every once in a while and has to miss a few games, uh, they look like they're going to put a blowtorch through the Eastern Conference and uh, have a lot of exciting games. If you want to get in on the action, go to game time. It's an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the GameTime app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. Uh, if you need to check out the website, check out GameTime.co to see what it's all about. Uh, but there is uh, lowest ticket price guarantees, uh, event cancellation protection, 24-hour return guarantees, job loss assurance, on-time ticket delivery, uh, game time ticket loves their fans and they're committed to ensuring you have an outstanding experience with them. So why not, uh, go and, and see what game time is all about. You can download the game time app, create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Uh, terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. You download the game time app today. Uh, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's easy to find uh, and buy MLB tickets in addition to the NBA playoffs for every kind of event uh, in the arenas. Views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, all of that stuff. Uh, game Time is an app worth checking out. So get, download the Game Time app today, create an account, and redeem the code CLNS for $20 off. Uh, download it, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Game Time. Another too many men in the ice penalty last night, Mick. That is six in the playoffs. That is now <laughs> tied the NHL record. Interestingly enough, they were talking about it on Nesson after the game last night. And uh, uh, several of those teams that have gotten six too many men in the ice penalties in the in the playoffs have were Stanley Cup champions. A bunch went to the Stanley Cup finals, including, I think, the 2013 uh, Boston Bruins. Um, but, you know. Uh, once again, they, they just gifted a, a power play to the opponent in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, you feel a little bit for Jim Montgomery because this was definitely a player jumping over the boards when they shouldn't have. And it was a combination of that and, you know, Coyle throwing a puck uh, east-west towards the bench instead of getting it deep. And that, like, causes the whole sort of scenario to happen. And the um, Dennis Weidman award goes too. <laughs> yeah. But like, but this keeps happening. You know what I mean? This is like not a, a, an isolated incident when something continues to happen execution wise over and over like that to a team, like you do blame the players because there's definitely like execution problems in it. No question. But like, it also is a reflection on the coaching. I'm sorry. If you make the same mistake over and over again, like that as a team, that is a reflection on the players and you can throw them under the bus and say it's their fault, but it's also the coach's fault. Well, like for not, he, for not making no sure it's hiding his reactions from the camera where that we yeah. have it. And, and this, you know, now, nowadays the cameras are all over the coach. Anytime anything bad happens. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and, and he's right now we're going to become a rock star on social media with some of these little gifts that we're starting to see. Oh yeah. Those are going to, those are going to keep <laughs> stay around forever. The diving oh. one. And then the one when, uh, 
Bennett got the penalty uh, for like snapping his head back. Those are going to become uh, long, long time oh, yeah. Jim Montgomery memes on uh, on uh, social media. There's no question about that. But like it, it did. It showed the urgency that he was feeling in the game, and he was coaching his ass off. You know, like to try to get them to the next game. It's got to be maddening because everybody cares. They all yeah, care. Of course they do. I don't think there's a, there's no there's not such. They spend these hours. They hold themselves up all freaking day for these games in these in these offices and go through every little turn over every rock 15 times and try to figure out if they got the right thing happening and try to go send all the messages right to the players, talk to everybody, meetings, video. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's it, coaching is such a thorough uh, Uber full time job nowadays. There's probably more done as a coach in a college level than that was done in the NHL uh, in the 80s, um, maybe even the 90s. I mean, the emergence of video certainly has, has changed it all again. Um, the tablets on the bench, all that stuff. It just never stops. Maybe it's too cluttered and maybe that's, challenging players from some of these things that used to be so first language to their hockey experience you do this your whole life you say uh, hey you know what I, I will wait for the athletic to do a feature on asking of doing a secret poll of nhl players how many times in junior hockey did you ever have did your team have a too many men on the ice penalty how many times yeah. you know so maybe in prior eras of the game when things were simpler this didn't happen as much. Maybe it's a function of that. I don't know. Well, I think it's a function somewhat of just a lack of sort of game instincts for players in general uh, in this generation of players, um, as opposed to other generations of players, as far as the, you know, because the coaches do too much thinking for them. No. Well, maybe when they're younger, but I think it's more because they spend so much time on skill development instead of actually playing and developing the instincts while they're playing the game you know, and, and developing what they should be developing instinctually. They're so reliant and there's so much of a focus now on, you know, spending hours and hours with skill, skill coaches doing drills that will help you toe drag a guy uh, all the way down the ice, but are not going to help you when you're getting into situational stuff in a game. Everybody you know? loves the video of that kid skating backwards while he's handling the puck in the middle of that giant uh, lake in the, with the mountains in the background. and hundred percent. Uh, you know, Everybody and I, I see it at the, but, but you know, it's like, the, it's like South American soccer kids. They grow up on the beach playing. That's yeah. how they develop that incredible cohesion. Yeah. And the instinct. It yes. doesn't, they don't need to teach it because it's, they keep the ball on the ground because it's second nature to them because yep. they grow up doing it. And, and that's the, the thing, Mick, is that like, now it, I see it at the youth level. Like kids don't play pond hockey anymore. Kids don't play like any kind of pickup hockey. Like it's all structured, organized, and there's very limited amounts of time when they are allowed to just play and, and just like their own and, instinctual and, and not have coaches in their ear or coaches telling them you should do this, yeah. you should do that. Like all that, they yeah. don't have enough time where they're just playing with each other and developing those instincts and figuring things and trying things yeah. uh, that may or may not work. Like all that stuff. Um, it's way too much devoted to um, skill stuff where kids will have all the skills in the world, but they don't have the instincts to play the game and they won't make the, instead of like making the right play and making the smart play, they try to like go end to end and skate to where everybody and score. And they continue to do that when they're at the older levels. And it's Some, sometime around 20 years ago, I went to uh, Hetland arena in New Bedford where I was at, when I was at the standard times there. And because they were having a junior uh, tournament, and junior hockey back then was still fragmented in a way that you didn't really know how much of it was hucksterism and how much of it was legit structured tier one, tier two, tier three. Anyway, yep. it was good enough hockey that I was curious about it. So I went there and a new team from New York called Apple Corps came in. Yeah, I know them. Okay. They came in to play against uh, whatever the local entry was at the time. And uh, the coach of the Apple Corps team and this was probably like high school age, maybe a little older than that, like American Legion baseball age. Yeah, yeah. And his team dumps the puck and they set up the one, two, two, which everybody was still fascinated with, uh, you know, with Jacques Lemaire at that point. And, and uh, 
And he tells her, he yells at his center, more, 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 stop. And then the guy gets to like between the circles, maybe a little high, a little north of the um, of the dots, the, the F1. And I'm thinking, oh, cut the crap. These are kids. Let them play the damn game. 100%. I was disgusted. I yeah. actually started screaming. I'm like, I'm a journalist. I'm in the bleachers back there. I'm like, come on. This is crazy. <laughs> Let them like, play. Let the kid four check for Christ's sake. I, I, I well, I felt like I felt like one of the Bruins brass in the back row in Wilmington when Vladimir Ruziska had a breakaway in training camp, and the linesman they hired to do the scrimmage blew him offside. <laughs> blew a two line offside. They all got up screaming. They were throwing their uh, notepads <laughs> and everything. <laughs> that's hilarious being robbed of an experience that's crucial to their development yes joystick coaching at its finest right there that that, that is definitely part of the problem analysis uh, by analysis yep uh the big question um mick is can the the boston bruins replicate that game five effort 20 block shots like the best period they've played in the series in the first period when they outshot him 12 to 4 and like as we've mentioned a couple times, like Reinhardt missed the net a couple of times to, in the third period with great chances, and then Swayman makes that save on the last one. But there, like the Florida had at least five or six like great A scoring chances in the last like ten minutes of that game, where they you know missed the net a bunch and and didn't execute, and so it was the the margin. Of, the Bruins played their best game, and the margin of them you know not having to go to overtime was like this um, in that game. So can the Bruins has Kachuk scored since the beginning of the series? Has right. he opened the series? First goal of the series. Has he scored since then? I don't think so. No, okay. he's assisted he's assisted right. on a bunch of goals though, but he has yeah. not. Scored. Okay, so yeah, great hockey player, you know, um easy not to like, you know, so perfect Panther. So um <laughs> I think we hear from him. I think we hear from guys like Verhage, um, you know. It, he was trying to replicate his overtime game seven goal back in game four. He was trying to cut around from behind the net and shoot from the circle on the forehand and uh, Swayman, sorry, come on, no big deal. And uh, you know, so there's just a lot of stuff going on right now from a Florida side that I'm saying, can the Bruins, the question is, is can the Bruins replicate? I don't think they'll have to manufacture it. I think the desperation will still be there. I think the question is, is how how effective will that be against the Florida team? That's going to be a whole lot more revved up yeah, from that's bring bring back it. from what they know was a flat game five. Right. They're going to, them their end of it, it's a flat game five. The Bruins have played a million. We know the drill. You got to come back and you got to win the tough one now in their building. Florida knows how to do that and has shown they can do it. So I think we've got ourselves a, you know, a real true measure coming up as to what the Bruins have for the long run of the series against a team that I look at and see the championship. I see baseball caps on these guys' heads. And I might be wrong um, because there's other teams with that, that are that are performing really well right now. Yeah, Dallas is playing great hockey in the West. That's they're, absolutely. They're, yep. they're getting such great speed out of their young guys that it's really negated a lot of the, you know, Ben has slowed down. Um, you know, uh, 16 is a million years old um and and uh, sagan's not what he was at sagan one point either a shell. he's yep. a smarter he's a smarter more competitive grizzled veteran he but is. from an athletic standpoint <laughs> youth is wasted on the young my man yep. uh, so um yeah but somehow they're doing it and and it's really if they're really effective right now and they're they're a big three team in the back end there they just got a terrific defense um you know i think that uh Moving on from number three, there was a huge move for them. And now they've got the horses back there. And then they added Tanev to it. So they're tough. They're tough, you know. So I like I like them. And, and Vancouver, I got to admit, they just they keep on um, impressing me. And Florida, I mean, Edmonton's fighting like hell to stay even with them. And uh, But I, I'm just looking at Vancouver's strength down the middle of the rink. It's, it's really impressive, you know, those players they got. And and I think that Florida is a team like that too. I think that that's yeah. as much as I love Charlie Coyle and appreciate what a great player he's been for the Bruins this year in a in a much heavier role. Um, I, I really look at Florida and say that's where they have the massive advantage in this series. Is Barkov is a beast, yep. and Bennett is a beast, and Lundell has been more than serviceable. 
Well, uh, I mean, for, forward wise, keeping guys out of the lineup. Forward you know, wise and center wise, with. they have the depth and the talent advantage over the Bruins. There's zero question about that. Like they, they, they can throw a lot of very good forwards out there, like good centers, good wings, like uh, good uh, hard players. Playoff They're a developed players. team. Yes. I mean, for them to do 122 points in 21-22 season and then get rid of eight guys and re uh, reconstitute their core and 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 bring forward and develop within and so that you have the list of players that were was on the team that won the President's Trophy about 122 points that year that is no longer part of that team because Bill Zito decided, no, I got to redo this thing. It's not right. And he and he because the second round they get swept out by the lightning and they knew that they still had work to do with that roster and they had the courage to do it. And, and last year it took a while for them to gel for them to be healthy and it came together at the right time. And they wound up going on a run um, this year, they get the regular season and they look to me like a Benjamin cousins and Lomberg can't get into this lineup against a team like the Bruins that, that hate those guys that and you can't get in. That tells me something about how effective Rusalainen, uh, Lusteranen. Lusteranen. I'm getting yeah. um, uh, uh, messed messed up on my on my fins. But, yep. Uh, uh, but Stenlin, big body, uh, you know, terrific fourth line center for them, uh, fundamentally sound. Um, they just they just got they got the team, they got it all, and and they're to me they're a baseball cap team waiting to happen. And the question is, is do they have this intangible stuff to take the final steps? Uh, we're I think they do. Them. Like I've, a good game from them Friday night. I've seen enough from them to believe they have it. It's just a matter of staying healthy and getting a bounce here or there. But I think they have all the ingredients to win a cup. That's why they got to the Stanley Cup. I think they're the best game. setup team left. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, in fact, I'm not even sure. I don't think anybody. Set up would. for the playoffs? Absolutely. 100%. I think that, yeah, they're in, and they had a good regular season. They, you know, yeah. it was pretty good. No, so, no. I, I so, think they uh, definitely are a quality team. Like, I think they're the best team in the East. I think they will, you know, beat the the Rangers, Hurricanes, whoever ends up coming out of that other uh, series. I, I And I think we're going to see the real deal on Friday night in game six. I think it's going to be difficult. So uh, will but the Bruins throw at them being, uh, I mean, uh, the kitchen sink might not get it done. I, well, no, uh, it might not. It, 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 but what could, what game. could Mick, what could get it done is if Jeremy Swayman makes like forty-five saves and stands on his head and stops everything that he sees, and that's always a possibility. So, like, they go into it knowing they have a shot because of the goaltender that they have, even against a team like Florida. But I do think it's going to take some replication of the effort that they had in Absolutely. Game Five, in Game Six, and the real the question is. You know, did they empty the tank in game five to make sure they got it back to Boston for game six? We see that a lot of times when a team gets to this elimination stage where they give everything they have to extend the series. And then the next game, they just don't have any more to give. And it's kind of, you know, over at that point. Or they have two days off for the first time since like much earlier on in the Toronto series. They finally get a little bit of rest. Maybe they get a second win and they're able to replicate that kind of effort with Swayman behind him. I think that's the million dollar question. They're going to try. <laughs> well, yeah, they, of course they and, will. And, it's a million and, dollar and question. I, but Florida's going to push early, right? Because they want to take yeah. the crowd out of the game. They want to dishearten the Bruins. They want to make the Bruins feel the wall. And, and so they're going to come out hard in the first period. So I think that I'm, I'm, I feel like the first five minutes of this game are going to be just awesome. You know, yeah, oh, yeah, the gonna, whole game's going to be good. I mean, it it's always gonna be is, it's right. going to be a Hagler Hearns fight for the first in the first uh, round there. It'll it'll be fun to watch. There's no question about it. Um, all right, let's thank our sponsors. Uh, Prize Picks, largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Uh, instead of battling thousands of other players that could be pros or sharks, simply pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you'll watch the winnings roll right in. Prize Picks has something for every sports fan, basketball, hockey, baseball, League of Legends, everything in between. Uh, they have the uh, even offer injury insurance so that your entries stay in e play even so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, prize picks will have your back and not count that as a loss. That sounds pretty great to me. Um, so it's fun and pretty simple. Download the prize picks app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's download the prize picks app today and use the code CLNS. For a first deposit match of up to $100, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Let's also thank Game Time. 
uh, your best way to get uh, get an authorized ticket marketplace for the NBA and the NBA playoffs, which makes getting playoff tickets even faster and easier. Uh, prices on the Game Time app, app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. Um, last minute deals save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy theater, all that stuff. Um, so download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code CLNS for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but create an account and redeem the code CLNS for twenty dollars off at Game Time getting your tickets. Mick, thank you very much. I will see you at Game Six on Friday night. Should be great. It should be great. We're looking forward to it. I'm glad you mentioned Hagler Hearns. That was a legendary fight. All right, everybody else out there, uh, thank you for listening. We'll see you at the ring.